get so mad, there's no control in me My thoughts get so bad, I'm like Oh God, here goes I lost all feeling from my head to my toes You said some shit that I can't let go So just stay tuned for the rest of the show Thank you so much for joining me at this very special recording at ISC in Barcelona. Um, I'm absolutely privileged to be sharing some time from three probably of the busiest people uh, on the floor. Um, and I'm going to ask you all to, to introduce yourself. So uh, we'll start with the ladies first. Uh, Natalie's on my left. I know you can't see us. It's, it's, it's a different recording this time. Um, but Natalie. Oh, hello. Thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Natalie Harris Briggs. I'm the Managing Director at Marketing with Bloom. Tanya. Hi, Ifat. I'm Tanya Houston. I'm CEO, Managing Director of Wildwood Public Relations. Um, and we're a, an agency that's been involved in this industry for 28 years this month. Amazing. This sort of reminds me today. Amazing. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, to my right is uh, Stuart. Lovely to be here, Ifat. Yes, I'm Stuart Hillis, the Managing Director of Bees Buzz PR. Uh, we are a pro AB exclusive PR agency. Amazing. And um, I know when I reached out to you, I was a little bit vague about uh, the conversation. And obviously, my um, well, all my conversations are around diversity, inclusivity, and equity in our industry. And um, what I really want to uh, raise awareness of is, is a lot of the good practice. There's a, a, a hell of a lot of good practice out there. There's a lot of people who are really committed to learning more about each other and, um, and being better and doing things um, better. But we're still seeing and I'm still hearing that um, certain elements in terms of diversity are underrepresented, whether that's age, race, religion, um, disabilities, sexual orientation, all of those elements are still um, maybe not at the table as much as they could be. And um, what I was really interested to know when I was, when I found out I was coming to ISC and just thinking of the preparation that companies are doing to draw people to come to, to a show or just to attract business generally, how do they present themselves and how and then there's a whole other layer of how do they actually come across. And it struck me that for those organisations who have got marketing teams internally, which most have, but are using the services of, of professionals like yourselves, what pressure does that put on you as an external to, to, un, to kind of get to know a, an organisation's culture? And then you're working, obviously, you haven't just got one mm. client, you're working with so many different organisations. How do you make sure they're, I guess, pre presented in the best way? And what challenges does that bring? So who'd like to go first? <laughs> that massive question. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to kick off. Um, well, first of all, I, I think we can safely say that we're in a lot better place today than we were five, six, seven years ago. Um, kudos to the efforts of people like yourself for bringing on that change. Uh, in my role, we're very much a conduit between, obviously, the media and the clients that we work for. Um, and uh, I say that five-year progress has meant that now the clients, the customers, which can be integrators, they can be manufacturers, they are also acutely aware of this issue. Um, and on top of that, we have the media, the, the press titles, the publishers themselves are acutely aware of this to the point where they are now deliberately requesting um, thought leadership pieces, you know, that do show the diversity of a company. Um, and together, I think we are on the right path. Um, we obviously advise where we can, but um, from my client's perspective, they already know of the issue. Um, obviously we work with marketing teams uh, which are very diverse themselves from my client's point of view so yeah they are acutely aware of it and um, we just try and pass their messages through to the publishers that also want it so uh, we are making big big jumps to past years brilliant that's so good to hear I think one of the one of the interesting things that's really highlighted when you're at a show like ISE it's very international it is 
it, it feels very diverse in some respects, but it also you can highlight, oh yes, there's areas to, of potential and areas where we can make a difference. And one of the, one of the other areas that we get involved in is looking at um, putting together panels or discussion topics just like this, mm -hmm. um, but also in the conference program and in various other events that are happening. And it's really nice to be able to work with clients to tease out the talent that they've got and encourage more diverse voices from that client. Because sometimes as a, as a marketing um, partner, um, whether you're PR or exhibition or events management, um, it's working with the client to encourage them to grow their resource and their team that are allowed to be able to speak on behalf of the client about different aspects because sometimes they get very stuck in no we have one spokesperson and that's the spokesperson because they know the technology they know it, the inside and out of the product but oftentimes they might want to talk about issues and so it might, that person may not be the best place for that particular mm. topic yeah i think i think you stuart you've hit the, the nail on the head i think that the, the client base certainly that we work with are really really um aware and what it means within their business and, and that we're seeing that reflected in, in some of the decisions that they make around uh, certain um, activities that they participate in um, and you know I, th I, think, I think yeah it's, it's absolutely on the agenda and we're starting to see more and more um, brands take those really bold steps to, to, to ensure that they are reflecting diversity within their brand. So other political messages as well. The thing that's is bringing to my mind is, is with what's happening in Ukraine, we saw so, so many of the AV industry brands really start, you know, put a message out there around that. And I know it's not necessarily diversity, but I think I think that political message that's starting to come through more into brands marketing. And I think that's really I'm really glad you brought that up because it was a, a question that I had for you because we saw, um, I don't know if you remember, there was, uh, I'm trying to think what day of the week it was when it was Blackout, was it Blackout Tuesday? Yeah. Um, and some brands decided to do that, some didn't. Mm. Ukraine, again, some some decided to, some didn't. Uh, how how much advice are you able to give? Or, or, or do you feel that's for the, the organisation to decide? What kind of influence do you have? Yeah, one of the things I'd, I'd say is that it's, you build a relationship with the client and um, I think it's really important to work to get to a position where you can give advice and you can say there's a range of options. There's, there's quite rarely there's a choice of if I'm allowed to you know, write and wrong. But many times there's a wide range of options that you can take. So I think what's, what's valuable to the client is that you a relationship where you're able to say well this is our advice on a number of things but at the end of the day it is the client's decision mm. um, so you can you know you can lead across the water yep but, of course yeah um, yep. as a general rule um, for me I would typically stay away from anything political with AV industry PR but that's now and then things come along which cannot be ignored yep. you can't push aside and uh, they become so acutely in the spotlight that manufacturers automatically know. Most of my clients have done fundraising campaigns yeah. for Ukraine um, without me needing any nudging. You know, it's, yeah. it's such a glaring need. Um, it's one of those rare occasions, and they don't come along often, where politics has to be brought into the industry. Or not, not politics, but you know, the state of the world um, has to be uh, addressed. And uh, yeah, Ukraine is one of those things that, I think all, all my clients to a man have fundraised for, done campaigns for, uh, without any leverage from myself. If I would have needed to say it would be a good idea to do that, yes, I would have done it. It's, it I think it's, it's a funny balance, isn't it? Because there'll be some organisations who say it's not our, it's not our place. We're not a political mm. organisation. It's mm. not our place to put that out there. But when I think back, so if we go back to. Um, pandemic George Floyd in America you know the taking the knee mm. that was you know all of that that's happened in sports for example yeah. and um, and I remember some of the kickback on Twitter mm. from the it, within the AB tweets yeah. and um, you 
know, certain people expressing this uh, opinion that why should we have to take the knee and not not understanding that actually the message is about solidarity and of yeah. course you don't have to if you don't want to but at what point is it um, do you think it's for a, for a brand or for an organization to take that rather than being seen we're, we're, because some people then become cynical of it and well, they think they're doing it just to tick a box and to mm, fit in mm. and to look like it but actually the culture is something else or do you know one of the things I would recommend authenticity and honesty Agreed. is really important yep. and there's, there isn't really any point in a brand coming out and saying oh yes I'm going to do this because if, if they don't really believe it yep. and if, if there's no you know if you jump on a bandwagon to be seen to be saying it it's very obvious yes and it really is yeah. there yes. is no point so in those respects it's, in those, in those uh, times it's better to say nothing um, but I think also the pandemic has probably highlighted the fact that we don't all understand everybody else's stories. We don't have the same experience. What's normal for me is not normal for you. It's not normal for any, you know. Our personal experience is the one that we know. Yep. So I think the um, if we could all take away from this situation, just listen to other people and think about actually their normal is different. Um, and bringing it back to diversity, which is one of the, the topics, you know, your, your key topic. There are so many things you can't see. And, you know, if I was, if we were putting the panel together, it's easy for me to say, you know, to a certain extent, gender. Yes. Um, but everything else is very, it's very hard yep. yes. to understand. And so taking the opportunity to listen to other people, not make those snap judgments, not make those snap on social media um, about things like that because people are really ready to take offence at the moment. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't agree more with that point. Um, obviously, if you have a panel of uh, women, men, different skin tones, the diversity is obvious, but as you quite rightly say, you know, the ADHD victims, the people that might suffer from mental ailments, you know, myself being one of them, hands up, you know, but you don't see that. No. Um, and as you say, it's all about listening. Um, really refreshing to hear that. Yeah. Another area, and I know we've spoken about this outside of this uh, conversation, um, the gender balance, uh, particularly in your industry, and we were just speaking about it just before we, we started recording. Um, and it's lovely to have you in the room, Stuart, because marketing is seen as a, as a job for a woman. It's, I'm saying that in the most loose way I can. But uh, it's a bit like HR, and uh, you know, even when I look at, at my own organisation, looking at Involve, um, there are certain roles still that are typically attract more of one gender than another. And, and what can we do? Why are we not seeing that change, or, or are we seeing it? Are you seeing a change in that? Across the marketing and PR spectrum, yes. There's no denying that women have the bias there. I can't explain why. Um, I will say as a caveat that these buzz is 50-50 male, uh, <laughs> females and males, but um, yeah, that is an exception. Uh, my first job at Midwich in the industry, I worked with 15 women, young women. Um, best team I've ever worked with, I have to say. Um, I couldn't explain why. I think it is starting to turn around. You're seeing a lot, rather than seeing men coming into the marketing positions, one thing that's acutely acute to me is that there's more women going into engineering roles now, yes. into yeah. sales roles, customer facing yes. roles, a lot more of that in the, yeah. in the last four or five years as I mentioned, so the tide is turning. Yeah. I don't know Natalie if you, if you have the same experience, but um, I didn't get into marketing through marketing, no. so I think access into marketing as a career is there's, there are many more pathways, mm -hmm. whereas something like engineering or more technical skills perhaps there are fewer pathways because you're coming from a different type. Yeah, I'd agree. I came from a sales background. So, um, so yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think that there are, certainly within some of the brands I work with, we're starting to see more and more men coming into the marketing teams, which is really great and adds a different dynamic. Um, and I also, yeah, I work with, I work, I work with a fairly balanced um, gender um, uh, split, actually, I would say. So I think there are 
particularly in the US, actually, there are a lot more men that I work with probably in marketing roles than, mm. than with, with women. So wow. I think it's definitely there's a tide. So we can learn somewhere. something. <laughs> yes. AV Tweeps listening, we can learn something from our US friends. Um, I'm, I'm very conscious of how much time we've got and uh, we want to get back out on the show floor and, and see people and, and you guys want to go and get on doing doing yeah, what you do. Really it's amazing, that it, it, to, to use one of your words, but buzzing out there. Oh, bless you. Um, what's been the highlight for you at, at the show so far? We're on day two now. Day two, seeing people again. You know, I can't tell you how when I go around either the people I'm meeting or people I just overhear saying, oh, I'm finally getting to meet you in the flesh. We're talking about teams that haven't been able to connect in person because of the location. We're talking about customers, partners. It's just that for me and the busyness of it all. I think we've said, I've said, we certainly said, yes, Tanya, and it happened to me yesterday. You're walking down the, the, the aisleways and you can't physically move yeah. because people too many, are, too many people are there. Lovely. And it's really, really nice. It just feels, and the location, I have to say. So yes. Barcelona, location, location, location. Yes. Really very, nice, very nice. nice. That yeah. beer just tastes that little bit different. Yes. <laughs> I, I think it's safe to say this is one that we are never going to forget. No. Uh, two days in, but it really has been an absolute barnstormer of a show for us. Uh, obviously numbers are fantastic uh, like you I'm seeing people clients even that um, I've worked with for two years that I've never met stateside and they're here and I'm seeing them for the first time uh, you feel like you know them because you speak to them every week on VC but to see them yeah. in the flesh is something something else Amazing. again yeah. it's yeah. nice it feels it feels back to a proper IZ. yes um, and I think it's it's, a ri- it's difficult to say what's a highlight because I know it's only day two but there's been so many Agreed. And, and it, even from Monday onwards, from the projection mapping, that you know, walking around the balmy evenings of Barcelona and these fantastic projection mapping uh, experiences, uh, it's it's been really good. The keynote yesterday, Rafik Anadol, was so inspiring. You've stolen my one. Love all things. You, like you've that. stolen. Sorry. You've stolen my <laughs> highlight. Honestly, it it everything you've said is absolutely a highlight. I've I've loved just seeing people and. Um, like you said, people. Well, we flew out together, didn't we? Just, we did. just seeing yeah. you at, at Stansted. And, um, but Rafiq Anadol's speech yesterday, and I felt quite emotional watching the yeah, projection mapping. Too. So just seeing that and knowing a little bit of it, of why it came together. And um, if you're listening, you've got to watch the recording of his, his speech because it was so moving. And something he said was about bringing the, making the invisible visible. Um, and that was at the core of what he does. And it, that's at the heart of what I want for, for diversity. And it, you know, it, it's about bringing those people who are invisible, yeah. who don't have a voice, bringing them out and actually yeah. championing people who don't, don't get a look in otherwise. I liked his point about opportunity, creating opportunity. And he, he, he made this point um, to the industry about six years ago, maybe six years ago, um, he was a student. Yes. And he um, emailed all of the manufacturers. And got nothing thing. back. He got one. He got one. That's back. right, yes. And yeah. it made me think about, you know, it would be lovely for clients and for people just to think about, okay, I get asked this question now or something. Where are they going to be in five years' time? Who are they going to be? How are they going to be changing our lives? Yeah. Just be open. Just be open to the possibilities that's out there. And this is what this show in Barcelona feels like. This year's ISE. It really does. The potential and the feels really quite exciting isn't it yes and i thought the two of you uh, natalie and stuart would have said winning an award was the highlight of um, you know I'm, I'm i should have actually started this recording by saying i'm joined by some uh, award-winning uh, panelists actually all three of you um do you want to share your success uh, yes so uh, abacor won um, best collaboration and communication product at the innovate awards and they are also up for a Stand Design Award, which is announced tomorrow. Fantastic. Really, that product also has a red dot on it. It does have a red dot on it, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Get that in there. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah, and congratulations, guys. And uh, th- our client Datapath picked up the Control Sector Award at the Innovation Awards last night. A fantastic evening and Beautiful kudos, evening. kudos to innovate. It was a fantastic. Do you know what? I, I loved the venue. Yes. It's such a beautiful building. It yes. was at, at the Maritime uh, Museum. 
and um, I liked the way they structured it where they did a few awards and then we had a bit to eat and then did a few it actually felt a bit more yeah it was going back to the site there conversation though you know meeting people that vibe yeah. outside as we all yeah. gathered outside before we went in that, that was something special absolute success I think this yes, show I agree. Um, thank you so much for, for joining me um, I'm going to put your links in the bio bit the, the, the write up but um, how can people reach you well people can reach me by uh, on my twitter page which is at nataliehharris77 or through LinkedIn so Natalie Harris Briggs and people can reach me through uh, my twitter which is at Tanya Wildwood or LinkedIn or Tanya.Houston at wildwoodpr.com and in much the same vein I can also be reached on LinkedIn and it's Stuart S-T-U-A-R-T at beesbuzzpr.com brilliant thank you I don't ever slow up no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness if you want to play tough and want to hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up no I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness if you want to play Show up.